The idea of my skateboard is that it's supposed to be pure. The absolute bare minimum of just a plank with wheels. This, however, puts me at a slight disadvantage compared to, say, cars. A car can both see and be seen in the dark, while I have to pray there are street ramps wherever I decide to ride. But if cars can have headlights, why can I? This is the story of how I attempt to overcome the darkness within my country, to see and be seen, and to be able to ride no matter what light level it is. Part 1. Brain Thinking I am smart enough to realize lamps involve electricity, and smarter still to understand that I have no idea how to solve it together any form of electronics. So it was time to hit up my friend Eric again, the same guy who helped me put neon underglow lights on my previous skateboard. Whatever we do to the board, it must not be permanent. Adding headlights does go against the initial philosophy of the entire board. When the sun is out, I don't want to be forced to have headlights on. But this project is too cool to not to do, so I need to find a middle ground. In essence, the lights must be detachable. With this in mind, it was time to figure out a design for the headlights. It might feel unrelated, but the only thing on my mind was this. The feel of these headlights. This idea persisted throughout the design process, and I know that all I want to get is the same feel as when looking at a car with pop-up headlights. I don't know why, but once my mind was set on this, any other design was off the table. Although, not even me and my brain could justify having moving parts for headlights. Which was good, because part 2. Designing this thing was way more complex than we anticipated. Our earliest designs looked something like this, where we would have a chair-like thing rotated 90 degrees and some sort of slide-on mechanic with a touch sensor that would turn on the light. But it did seem a bit complicated, so we went for a simpler design, where the sliding on mechanic was still the same, but we would have a switch at the front. We decided to have the batteries be held within the part here. The decision to have two batteries is based mostly on... Uh, well, to be honest, I don't really know. I think it had to do something with us wanting 3 volts for some LED lights, and normal batteries provide 1.5 volt. Sorry, when I say that I don't know electricity, like, I really mean it. Hold up. One astute viewer might say. How will you fit two batteries within the size limitations of the board? The board looks to have an approximate height of 2 centimeters and a width of 15 centimeters. The diameter of even a AAA battery is 10.5 mm with a length of 44.5 mm, which would make it implausible to stack them vertically. Smaller batteries would not provide enough capacity for- Yes, that is correct. The board itself is 2 cm thick, and we would prefer to have the electronics to be the same height. Add a few millimeters for the top and bottom of the holder to grip onto the board. We needed 3 volts, and for ordinary batteries, we would need 2 of them per headlight. Using an off-the-shelf battery holder, similar to this one, would put the height at around 2.5 cm, or to stick forward the same length, which is a tad bit too much in my opinion. Let me introduce you to our saver in this dire situation. CR123A. This bad boy produces 3 volts out of the gate, and when put into a battery holder, maxes out at 1.8 cm in height. Perfect for our needs. For the actual lights, we bought some tiny, super bright LED lights. Doing some quick maps, we can figure out that two LED lights will give us about 10 hours of usage, and one will be about 20 hours. Pretty good in my opinion. It was time to start on the actual design. Part 3. The actual design. We started small and began with just the electronic part. A simple breadboard with the lights on, connected to a switch, and on the back side we kept the battery. Finally, we cover up the electronics with a plate, which is mainly held together by the switch. We did make place for super small screws, but we ended up not bothering to use them. The reasons will be apparent soon. The holder was designed to be printed like this, and the lights would slide on right here. However, as I noticed real fast, the pressure is really intense and held everything in place. And thus, we scrapped the screw holes. But looking at this, I can't shake the feeling that something is missing. Because of the way I print the model, I can't just add the cover to the model like I originally thought. Time to improvise. This is what I came up with. A cover that slides right into the slits on the holder. Ta-da! 
Now I feel I am in a little weird situation. This is my printer, which was sponsored by Creality. This video is sponsored. And usually people just skip through the sponsored segments, which sucks because this printer did play a huge role in how I prototype things. I don't have any talking points like I didn't get any, so I'm, I'm, I'm just supposed to showcase the printer. So I hope uh, you stick around because uh, you're gonna miss some, some parts of the, the, the entire story. Just comparing to my old printer, this holder takes about two and a half hours to print, but with this new one it takes just an hour. It moves and prints so fast I had to put it on the floor to get a stable enough holding. This is the prime reason I could get out so many prototypes in only a week. One unexpected problem I ran into was that the new printer was a bit too good. I had been counting on that when I print something it would turn out a fraction of a millimeter larger than the sketches. For these connecting parts I originally made the two sticks 0.2 millimeters thinner, otherwise they wouldn't fit the cutout at all. So for my prints forward I didn't have to take this into account anymore. When I tried the lights in my room, the lights were so bright and really stung. That's not good enough. So I improvised this lamp cover, which now only lights downwards forwards and keeps everyone's eyes safe. And with that out of the way, I finally had an attachable headlight. Yippee! I did however learn the hard way that just because it attaches to the board doesn't mean that it has good grip. Just pushing the board a bit can make the lantern fall off. But evolution gave us brains for a reason. We improvise, adapt and overcome. Here's the solution. I bought these grip pads. In the lantern we put this empty space to fit the dimensions of the pads which turned out great. Comparing the grip between these two is like night and day. Sometimes you don't see a problem until you use it in practice. I thought that if I make the empty space thinner, then the pressure from the grip pad would be greater. It turns out that putting more pressure near the edge causes the whole thing to bend upwards and lose grip. And sometimes, when you run into a problem, the solution might just be... more. Introducing Thick Boy Slim Release Candidate 3. Instead of just one pad, it's three. In order to resist bending, the top and bottom layer height were increased by one millimeter. Going still, I increased the amount of plastic inside the holder from 15 to 50% infill. And finally, I think I have a design that I'm happy with. Now to test it. Right? Part four, Swedenland. The keen brain among you might have noticed that there is one issue I've been dancing around that I have not mentioned yet. And that is vibrations. You see, in Sweden, for the past two weeks, it has constantly been snowy on the streets. Which means I can't ride my board. One thing I learned from a neon underglow skateboard is that riding on asphalt can really make the electronics in it peace out. I'm hoping the padding is enough to keep the vibrations at bay, but I won't know for sure until I try. Which unfortunately brings me to the end of the first part of this project. I can't really go on until this godforsaken snow disappears from the streets. For the next part, we will be testing on real asphalt and see how well it handles. We will probably order custom made circuit boards, because why the heck not? And I'll see if there are any design improvements that can be made to the holder. If you have any suggestions, please leave a comment. Until next time, please do the like and the subscribe and the many thanks, tak tak, hey hey!